This week on the Retirement Quick Tips podcast, I'm bringing you segments of an interview I did with Jason Parker. We're talking about three numbers you must know to retire with confidence. Jason is a best selling author. He created the Retirement Calculator and he's the host of Sound Retirement Radio, which is a very popular podcast, has over a million downloads. I've included links to his podcast and other resources that we talk about in the interview in the show notes. So be sure to check those out. And without further ado, here is today's interview segment with Jason Parker. How do you deal with just the sheer uncertainty of nobody knows when they're going to die and nobody knows when they're going to, how long they're going to live? Yeah, well, I always like to say hope for the best, plan for the worst. And planning for the worst from a longevity standpoint means that you're going to make it to age 100. Now, I don't know about you, but we serve a lot of families, but I have not personally had anybody make it all the way to age 100 in all the families Mm. that we serve. I think the statistic is it's like 2% of all Americans will make it to age 100. Now, my experience has been when I'm talking to people, they'll tell me, boy, they eat right, they exercise, they have longevity in their family. Everybody tells me they're going to make it to age 100. I just haven't had the experience yet of walking life with anyone who has actually made it to age 100. But from a planning standpoint, you're right. The right thing to do there is to assume that you're going to live a long time. One of the mistakes, though, that I see people make, and again, this was one of the reasons I designed the retirement budget calculator, was because people think, oh, well, I've got this much money in expenses, and those expenses are going to compound, and and those expenses are going to grow at 3% per year or whatever the inflation factor is forever. And that's really not the case. You know, when you get older, I see couples that they split a meal when they go out or When they get into their 80s, they don't, they just don't want to travel as much as they used to, or Mm -hmm. sometimes it's, you know, 90s when that scales back. So one of the things that we wanted to do, be able to do is to be able to show people, okay, well, you're going to spend more in the early years of retirement. Let's make sure that we calculate that. We put that into the calculator and that spending is going to come to an end at a future point. And then you may not be spending as much. I mean, when you lose a spouse, that's another time, you know, travel all of a sudden is not as much fun when you're doing it on your own. And so we see people's life get simple. I remember my mentor, my friend, Dean, he and I worked together for 15 years and he hired me when I was in my mid twenties and he was in his mid sixties. He died a couple of years ago, but his mom actually was somebody who made it to age 100. But at the end of her life, the only income she had was like $1,500 a month coming in from social security. And she was able to save money every month as a result of with that income coming in because she would go to church on Sunday. She didn't spend a lot of time out. She didn't eat a lot, you know, at mm-hmm. age 100. And Dean was always amazed at how much that his mom was able to save money when she only yeah. had $1,500 a month coming in. So, well, it's certainly true that living a long time is, is a big risk. And especially if you have a lot of medical expenses towards the end of your life. But to think that what you're spending at 60 is going to be the same as what you're spending at age 100, I think is a mistake that I see a lot of people make. And that's that's some of that granularity that you want to get into in the planning where you want to be able to say, yes, I'm probably going to spend more on travel the first 15 or 20 years of retirement, but I may not be spending that much on travel every year after that. Exactly. Okay, so to recap, we have what your expenses and what your spending is going to be in retirement, how much you've saved, how much money you have, and then how long you're going to live or your longevity. So Jason, where can people find you? Where can they find your podcast? Where can they find your retirement calculator? All of that. The website is soundretirementplanning.com. That's where they can listen to the podcast that I've been doing. And that's a great place just to learn about all things retirement. That's been my focus for the last, I've been doing that podcast now for 15 years. So a lot of content. That's like old school. You're like a pioneer. I know. Yeah. I've got the gray hair to prove it too. (laughs) And reading glasses, that's the latest. (laughs) Um, And then the retirementbudgetcalculator.com. Again, software as a service, there's a premium version that you pay for. And then there's a free version. The free version lets you create a budget for free a retirement spending plan. It also lets you calculate your net worth so you can put in assets and liabilities. Then you can put your birthday in there. I'll give you, you know, your, your average life expectancy based on the social security mortality table. So that's all free. The premium version of the calculator though, if you want to actually project out cash flow into the future, you have to pay either $9 and 95 cents a month to have the premium version or $95 a year. So there's a cost if you want the, uh, some of the more advanced features. Okay. Well, great. 
Well, Jason, thank you so much for being a guest. This was a lot of fun talking to you and you're just, you're so bright and you, you know, you think about all these things from different angles and people need that. They need to consider like, have you thought about this or that? And so I really appreciate all the knowledge that you've brought to our listeners today. Thank you so much. Well, Ashley, thank you. Thank you for doing the work to educate our community and people that are getting ready for retirement and for being willing to take on the responsibility of being an advisor. There's not enough people. And a lot of people don't know this, but a lot of the advisor community is in that retirement age themselves. They're yes. getting ready to transition into retirement. So we've got a shortage of advisors. And uh, I mean, if people are lucky enough to find somebody that will serve them. Boy, what a blessing that is. So thank you for being willing to do both parts, educate and walk life with people. It's a huge responsibility. Yeah. Well, it's a lot of fun and I love it. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Jason. All right. Thank you.